<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, what is the creepiest thing you have experienced that you still think about to this day? My brother had a party in college at his place on campus, they had trailers that were on campus and were a part of housing. There were a bunch of parties that night in that area. I was there for a little bit but was still in HS and in hockey practice in the morning so had to get home earlier. My brother and his buddy were on the porch late at night, like 3 to 4 am, when in the distance, in the dark, they saw someone randomly running through the night with a football. My brother's buddy even yelled out run forest, run. Next morning the police knocked on everyone's door to interview the people who lived in the area. Apparently a student was decapitated and the body was found near the campus, but the head was missing. There was a massive search and a few weeks later, they were looking at the track and field complex behind where my brother lived and they found the head when emptying the porta potty at the track. My brother is fairly certain the random guy in the dark running with the football was actually the guy running with the head. One night I was sleeping over at a friend of mine's girlfriend's house. I was having trouble falling asleep, so I decided to play some video games. As I raised my head off the pillow, I saw two dark figures standing in the corners of the room. My first thought was, fuck that, so I lowered my head back down on the pillow and closed my eyes. For some reason, I fell asleep easily after seeing them. I told my friend what I saw the next day and he told me that he has seen the exact same figures there before. He said that some days he would wake up and the Xbox would be on, knowing that he turned it off before bed. His girl claimed we were crazy and that she had never seen the figures before, but we were certain we saw the exact same figures in the corners of the room. Went out to a secluded camping spot years ago. A buddy had this secret site up in the mountains that he used in high school. Literally middle of nowhere in the mountains, about an hour off main roads with no GPS. We got out lit up a joint and started setting up, when I saw a single light through the trees about 100 yards away. It was moving as if a headlamp of some sort. When I pointed it out my high buddy shouted hello towards it and the movement stopped abruptly with no reply. I wasn't that nervous until my friend whose spot this was said he'd never saw another soul in this area for all the years he'd camped there. We called out again, but the light remained motionless. We were all getting a creepy feeling, why it wasn't moving anymore and I casually slash jokingly commented that if it was me and I wished us harm, I'd have strapped the headlight to a tree and then snuck around behind us. Literally at that moment a branch snapped about 30 feet to our left. We immediately threw everything back into the truck without a word and hightailed it out of there without looking back. When I was in college, 20 plus years ago, I had a desk chair that was on rollers, the kind where the pedestal ends in a five-armed star with a roller at each end. The arms of the star were made of hard-formed plastic, and were pretty thick. I was up very late one night cramming for a final, and went to bed for no more than an hour or so to take a nap. When I got up I went back and sat in the chair and immediately realized something was wrong, all five of the hard plastic arms were warped and bent at almost 90 degrees, all in the same direction. It certainly wasn't like that an hour prior when I left it. Again, this was hard brittle, thick plastic, it doesn't slash shouldn't bend, it would just snap under enough force. I suppose maybe if you heated it up to soften it enough, you could reshape it, but how could that have happened? I lived alone, doors were locked. It'd be the most bizarre prank in the world to break into somebody's apartment with. A blowtorch or something? to reshape their chair legs? I kept that chair for years and years even though it was now basically unusable, because I thought that one day I'd be staring at it and the answer would come to me. I have absolutely zero belief in anything supernatural and nothing else bizarre has ever happened to me, but I think about this constantly. I often go for walks in the woods near my house. It helps me to clear my mind and calm me after a stressful day at school. On this particular day, I decided to walk far into the woods to get to this beautiful clearing with a creek. I sat down and listened to music for a while. I thought I heard a whispered hello from behind me, but I thought nothing of it. It was starting to get late, so I put my stuff inside my backpack and started to walk back up the trail. Then I heard the hello again. I said hey back, thinking it was a hiker that needed directions. When I turned around, nobody was there. I started walking faster. A few minutes pass, and I hear it again. I slowly turn around and look into the woods. I saw a humanoid figure hiding behind a tree with just its arm in my view. Hey dipshit. Stop hiding and show yourself, I yelled. The thing slowly walked sideways to reveal itself. I looked just like a mannequin, with human features and shiny skin. Its eyes were. Different? They had no iris, and was only the pupil. They didn't blink. The mannequin creature then said hello again. It didn't even look like the voice was coming from it, 
It was as if its mouth slowly wedged open and then the voice was coming from a tape recorder inside. The voice sounded extremely realistic though. I stood in shock for a minute and watched as it stumbled towards me. It looked like it had never walked in its lifetime. I booked out of there and as I ran it repeated its hello over and over, slowly fading out. I haven't told anyone about this because I know they won't believe me. I no longer go into those woods alone, as I have moved to the States. Has anyone had a similar experience? My cousin and I went hiking around his property and stumbled on a tire track about an inch deep and some mud along the edge of a stream. Just one, so we figure it was a wheelbarrow. The only thing was. There were no footprints to indicate what was pushing the wheelbarrow. We followed the tire track and it led us into what I could only describe as a cul-de-sac of cliffs. The only way out was the way we came, or we had to climb about 45 to 60 feet. The whole area was covered in mud, and we found the wheelbarrow. But the only footprints were ours. There were also tons of clothes around. All of different sizes and styles. Everything ranging from kids clothing to adult clothes. Just scattered around. There were also a few dozen figurines carved from stone, and some put together from tree bark. These were the only things that seemed to be positioned with care. The clothes were scattered carelessly, but the figurines were standing upright, places atop rocks or on fallen branches. In the side of one of the cliffs was a hole. Too small for us to fit in, and I was a pretty small kid at that age. We probably wouldn't have noticed it if not for the sound that came from it that caught our attention. It was a hum. Very short, and followed by a click or a scratch. We shined our lights into the hole and saw it went about 30 feet back into the cliffside. The outer layer of stone was reddish brown, but the inside was gray, the same color as the stone figurines laying around. We weren't sure how far back the hole went, but we had the bright idea to throw one of the figurines into the hole and see if we could get it to hit the back. So we did. I tossed it in and my cousin shined his light, and we watched it bounce to the back. The second it reached the very back, what I can only describe as a curled arm uncoiled from some unseen crevice and snatched up the figurine and disappeared. We didn't see what it belonged to. But the color was a bluish gray, and after it grabbed the figurine, it didn't just pull back out of view. It spiraled, quickly. It was like a scorpion tail, but with a hand at the end instead of a stinger. Later on, my cousin and I brought our uncle back to the place. But all the clothes were gone. Everything except the wheelbarrow and the figurines had vanished, and there were still no footprints. The hole still had a humming noise occasionally come out of it. So my uncle called the police and we ended up meeting up with them back in the house and then bringing them to the place. Still only our footprints, but the figurines were now facing the other way. This time, my cousin had done the classic thing that kids do in movies. He taped a camcorder to a remote control car. The humming still came from the hole, but it became a rapid click as the officer and my uncle looked into the hole. We eventually convinced them to let us drive the remote control car into the back and see if we could record anything back there. The hole was so small that it was almost too tight of a fit for the RC car with a camera on top of it, but it was doable. My cousin drove it to the back of the hole, turned it right, turned it left, and then turned it around and drove it back. We watched the footage. It goes in, it looks right. Nothing. It turns left. Dozens more figurines made of stone are in the back of the hole, just around the corner. All of them facing directly at the car and arranged in perfect lines. But aside from that, nothing. No creepy creature with scorpion tail arms or anything. Just the figurines. The cops said they would look more into it and let us know if they found anything worth telling us about. The following morning, my cousin and I woke up to one of the figurines sitting on the edge of his dresser, next to his Nintendo 64. He swears he didn't take one, so does my uncle, and I know I didn't. So unless they are lying, it showed up on its own. Or it was placed there by whatever was in the hole. On a family vacation when I was a kid, renting a beach condo. The unit next door was a regular residence, and we met the family, nice people. They were leaving at the end of the week for their own trip, but the daughter had to work one more overnight shift as a nurse. The dad and the younger kids left that day and the mother and daughter were going to leave the next morning and catch up with them. That morning, as we were packing up our own stuff to go home, we started hearing sirens out on the road in front of the condos. There were several emergency vehicles outside, and eventually an air evac helicopter landed on the road and took off with a gurney rolled out of the unit next to us. A while later, we got the story. The daughter had come home from her shift and found the mother beaten to death with a hammer or something similar. We hadn't heard or seen anything, even though we shared a wall. The creepiest part was that the officers found that the killer had accessed the house by the back porch door, facing the beach. 
The bedroom me and my brothers were sleeping in was down on the ground floor, with the same porch door leading out to the beach, only a few feet away from that same door and only separated by a waist-high rail. Talking about it later, we weren't even sure we had locked the door that night. When I was around 20, we had this weird neighbor that we didn't think about too much. One night I was up at 2 a.m. and noticed out my window that I could see the reflection of a fire. So I went into the completely dark living room and peeked through the window to make sure it wasn't someone's house. It was the neighbor, with a bonfire in his driveway, just standing with his back to it, staring directly at me. Now, I hadn't made a sound or anything, there is no way he heard or saw me coming. He was just staring directly at me. So being completely freaked out, I went to bed and couldn't fall asleep because I was convinced he was going to murder me. About half an hour later I hear crunching, and unlike probs just a raccoon in the driveway. Then I hear the clapping. I look out from my window to the driveway, and there he is, standing in my gravel driveway clapping and staring directly into my bedroom window. My grandma had Alzheimer's and maybe dementia when she lived with us. Her room was also like right down the hallway from mine so it was really common for me to be woken up in the night to her laughing, screaming, or talking. One night things were different, I could hear her talking and someone responding. I got up to take a close look and I noticed when I was getting out of bed my dog looked like something was wrong which was weird to me, I went up to the door to hear things better. She was paralyzed on her right side so I thought this was just my mom coming to help her with something, but the responding voice was a male voice. My dad didn't live with us and I don't have any brothers nor did this sound like her own voice at all. My first thought was that it was my uncle but why would my uncle be at my house, if he was then there was something wrong with my grandma because he would only come this late when there was an emergency. I also would have heard him coming through the front door. I put myself against the wall in a way that I could see into my grandma's room but anyone in the room couldn't see me unless they were at the room door I couldn't see anyone except my grandma's feet. I got close enough to make out what they were saying now but what made this weirder is that my grandma wasn't speaking English and neither was the person they were speaking Farsi. This was the conversation I heard. Voice they have been treating you well? Grandma yes they have been treating me very well voice who is the guy in the hallway. Grandma that is my grandson he's a good kid voice I think the dog sees me at this point I freaked out and met my way back to my room. I thought I was in a nightmare or something and I wanted to wake up. My first though was that I could pinch myself, that didn't work so I tried to poke myself with my knife. I did it pretty hard because it left a mark in my hand that stayed for a few days. I tried to go back to sleep not listen but I couldn't. I watched the sunlight come up through my window with this very uneasy feeling that I was being watched. My grandma lived for another 5 years with us and a few more minor weird things happened but this one always stuck with me. First of all, I'm writing this from my phone so I apologize for any mistakes. And it's probably stupid long to read so I apologize. This story is a mixture of my personal experiences and my mom's. This all took place in about 6 months when we moved out to go back to our hometown. I was in second grade when my family moved to Texarkana, Arkansas so that my dad could attend police academy or SWAT school or something I don't remember exactly. Anyways we moved into this older home but was plenty nice for me. The layout was a bit strange in my opinion. You walk into the kitchen from the carport and directly to the left is a pantry and next to that was my bedroom. Through my bedroom you could reach the master bedroom and thorough that room the other room that could go to the third bedroom. They were all connected with access to the living room or kitchen really weird. So my room was the first bedroom and was pretty small but it was mine and I loved it. We previously lived in a small single wide which was cramped for my parents, two sisters and myself. Well I loved me room initially but I remember liking it less and less each day. I began to get scared of that room. I would go in it to play with my toys but only with the door open and I would sit just in the doorway. My parents repainted my room for me to try to help me like it more. Bright yellow. No idea why that color. It didn't help. In a desperate loving attempt to help me my parents gave me the big master BR and they took my little room. Cool. But the master BR had no windows. WTF. I don't know how long I had been staying in the room but one night I woke up in the middle of the night. No windows. Pitch fucking black. No bueno for a 7 year old or however old I was in second grade. I woke up to the pitch black and instantly had this horrible feeling. Chills. The feeling that I was being watched from the blackness. Being watched from the darkness of my room. I pulled the covers over my head and just waited. I could feel the presence of something. Something evil standing right beside my bed. Now I'm not super religious but I do believe in God. I remember laying there praying that if I did that night if I would go to heaven. I repeated it over and over and over just waiting for the end. I was absolutely terrified. 
I said that till I fell asleep and woke up the next morning. That was my encounter. My mom told me later her experiences. I'll make it quick. She would be in the back doing whatever and hear a thump. Go in the living room and a candle would have fallen off of the coffee table. Put it back, go back to whatever and hear it again. Go back. Candle on the floor. Freak out. Get gun. Call my granddad. Clear house. Clear. Clueless. Stuff like that. Our lights in the house at one point began to flicker quite a bit. Parents called an electrician who came and went into the attic to investigate. Dude came down looking white as a ghost. Would not tell my mom what he saw but said he would never ever come back to that house. That's really about it that we encountered that we remember. Mom said when we moved it she found a Ouija board in the closet. Moved out of the house and within a month it burned to the ground. When I was 10 or near that age my sister brought over two of her friends who were like 16 at the time. We were bored so I convinced them all to play hide and seek. I lived in a big house that had several access points to a large attic. The house was also very spooky and was visited by priests once while I lived there as a child. The three girls dispersed and went to hide while I counted down from 50. While counting down I was interrupted by the most haunting screams I have ever heard in my life. I was petrified by it. The girl sprinted down to the kitchen screaming and in tears. After calming her down we all questioned her on why she was screaming. She said she was hiding in the attic, and while sitting there waiting for me she saw a demon sitting at the other end of the attic looking at her. I nearly shat myself because I was already scared of the house, I never saw her again after that. I had a golden retriever growing up. It was a super nice dog that was friendly with every single human it ever met. Except one. When this story happened I was just starting full day school, so I must have been around 6 years old. I was playing in the front yard and a guy was going door to door selling something out of a truck. When he got done at the next door neighbors he started walking over their yard to ours. The golden went into maximum dog fury mode. Hair went up, teeth bared, and angry slash scary growling commenced. Anyone who knows dogs knows the difference between regular growls and scary growls. She ran to the edge of our grass, stopped, and just snarled at this person, who was maybe 15 to 20 feet away. They yelled at the dog some, walked back to the truck, and drove like two houses down and kept going door to door. Literally grew up with that dog, and I never saw it act remotely like that before or after including other door-to-door -door salespeople. Definitely a creepy experience that I randomly think about sometimes. This was about 20 years ago when I was 10 or 11. My best friend had moved into an old historical home in our hometown, and I was staying the night. Her stepfather always talked about the home being haunted, and his wallpaper on his computer was a picture of the house before they moved and that clearly showed at least two figures, a man and a child looking out of different windows at him, the photographer. The attic was this strange old room painted lime green, an otherworldly color, with figures in black painted as a border around the entire room. Some of the figures were children, others witches. Lastly, I know a man had a heart attack and died on the staircase in the front of the home a decade or so earlier. So, I was staying the night as I did many nights. She and I were the only two home, and she had gone upstairs for a moment during a movie. I went to go upstairs towards her room. The house was completely quiet. As I was walking up the stairs, I noticed the stairs shaking slightly when I wasn't taking a step, and I stopped only to hear the steps continue behind me. My heart skipped a beat, and I began running to the top of the stairs while the steps continued behind me. When I reached the top of the staircase, I turned to enter her room, but the door seemed locked. The stairs were still vibrating and something was still walking towards me. Her door wouldn't open, and I began crying. Above me, I could see the light turning on and off in the attic through the vent. I kept turning her doorknob and pushing with all of my night to escape whatever was coming up the stairs. Then, the light in the hallway began flickering. When I finally felt like my life was about to end, my best friend opened the door down the hallway of the bathroom and ran to me. She quickly opened her bedroom door. And, we sat on her bed discussing what had happened. Her door doesn't lock. She and I were the only two home, and she was in the bathroom for the entire event. And, the bathroom only had one entrance, which I could see the entire time I was upstairs. Nothing like this has ever happened to me again. And, I have no explanation for it. She told me she sometimes heard someone on the stairs, and sometimes her door wouldn't budge, and the lights flickered and turned on and off on their own sometimes. I still think about this sometimes. And, since this experience, when I'm alone, sometimes, I worry I might experience this again. It was terrifying. I was on a field trip to a museum slash theater place in kindergarten and we were getting ready to leave. 
The place was pretty crowded, both with regular visitors and kids from other schools, so the teachers were trying to keep track of our class. As we were walking, I spotted a very familiar looking woman to the side of us. She turned and made eye contact with me, sure enough, it was my mother. The face, the hair, everything down to the outfit she was wearing that day. She gave me a smile that can only be described as very, very unsettling. Something was off about her, but I suppose red flags are easily overridden by children. I immediately started making my way through the crowd to try and get to her. She kept eye contact and held out her hand as I approached. That's when it dawned on me that my mother wasn't chaperoning that day and had no reason to be there. I stopped in my tracks, and she must have seen the hesitation on my face, because she simply turned around and walked away. I tried to follow her, but she had vanished into the crowd within seconds. When I turned around again, my class was nowhere in sight. I found a teacher from another school and she brought me back to the buses where my class was waiting. I got scolded for wandering away, and my teachers were asking me all sorts of questions while I just sat there puzzled. I didn't say another word for the rest of the day until I got home. I asked my mother why she was at the field trip, and she had absolutely no idea what I was talking about. Gives me chills every time I think about it. That thing, whatever it was, was not my mother. When I was a kid my mom took my cousins, sister and myself to a relative's house to visit. All the adults went out that night and left a house full of kids behind with a babysitter. We had a good time playing with our distant cousins. It came time to go to bed and my sister and I were put in a room with bunk beds with some of the cousins. All the younger cousins feel asleep pretty fast. My cousin, who is near my age, and I stayed up talking. When we both started to get tired and start to fall asleep, all of a sudden we heard a scream and looked up out the window to see a man jumping off the front porch. The house was shaped like an L and the window to the room we were in faced the porch. Needless to say we both got freaked out and didn't want to move. However, one of us mustered the strength to get up and run into the living room to get the babysitter. When we told her what happened, she called her boyfriend over who came with a pistol and checked all around the house. She gathered all us kids together and we all slept on pallets in the living room. When I talked to my cousin and mother about it years later, neither of them have any recollection of it at all. I know I didn't dream it. I know it happened. However, it's disappointing that I am the only one that remembers this event. When I was in college, I had four roommates that went home over the weekend. I was usually alone from Thursday night to Sunday evening. One morning I woke up with a full set of human bite mark on my lower back. I shower before bed and lotion up so it wasn't there the night before. It was hot so I sweated in my sleep and decided to take another shower and saw it. I went to work and showed all my colleagues. There was no swelling and it didn't hurt. It just looked like someone bit me. By the end of the day, it suddenly disappeared. From then on I kept hearing knocking noises on my bedroom wall and the wall is the stairway. I thought that maybe the neighbor's kids were messing around and tried to run and catch them in action. I would hear and see footsteps on the carpet. One weekend my little sisters came over to stay with me and in the middle of the night they heard a woman screaming and something drop in the kitchen. I ran out to check on them and they were terrified. Early that same morning my bedroom door was shaking from knocking and I thought it was my sisters. I got up and saw they were still asleep. It only happened to me and not my roommates. Eventually my roommate got a shaman to bless the apartment and suddenly everything stopped. I've had sleep paralysis for most of my life. One night, I went out with friends and we went back to my best friend's house afterwards. He had a large, L-shaped couch, and we both fell asleep on it, him on one side and I on the other. I woke up when the sun rose and was having sleep paralysis. As I lay there, unable to move but able to see my surroundings, I watched as the blanket covering me began to slowly slip off of me and onto the floor, then my arm began moving away from me as though someone was pulling it. I could feel the top half of my body slowly sliding off the couch and was only able to lay there and do nothing. I've never had a sleep paralysis episode in which I was so frightened. And then, suddenly, my best friend sat bolt upright and yelled leave her alone. I woke up immediately and was able to scramble away from the edge of the couch. He said he thought he was dreaming when he opened his eyes and saw a man wearing what he thought was a black hoodie pulling me off the couch. As soon as he yelled, the man disappeared. I've always discounted what I've seen while having episodes is all in my head but I really questioned it afterwards. This story happened 10 years ago in Moscow, my family moved an old apartment that was empty for 25 years or so. Old Soviet furniture included. I was about 10 yo btw. My dad sometimes snorting as hell so my mom was sleeping in other room with me, there was two beds. I almost fell asleep and heard some strange noise, it sounded like water was dripping, drop by drop. 
My mom was doing laundry this day so I thought it was water dipping from the clothes. There was a rope in this room and sometimes mom hung clothes on it to dry and put a bucket under them so floor don't get wet. That noise was annoying and I asked mom to take away the clothes and let it dry somewhere else. She did this and we were trying to fell asleep again, almost seeing my dreams and I heard this noise again, I've tried to listen more closer to this sound and realize that wasn't water, it was coming somewhere from old Soviet desk in the corner of the room. And it sounded like someone was tapping on the desk with his fingernail. I've asked mom what is it and she said she has no clue. As soon as we spoke that noise disappeared and at this moment I realized that something was wrong. But what could you do, we tried to fell asleep again, and after 3-5 to five minutes this sound started again. This is where it was getting really scary, asked my mom if she hears this too and she said yes. Sound disappeared again. Well I started felling that something or someone is under this desk and I was terrified even to move, but tried to ignore it and I wasn't alone in the room so I fall asleep eventually. This noise woke me up several times during the night and every time I moved or if we paid attention it stopped. One night I was reading alone in this room. And I've heard some footsteps coming towards me and defiantly felt someone is near, but it stopped right after I looked up. But I was a bit older at this moment so I rationalized it and thought it was neighbors. Soundproofing isn't a big deal for Soviet buildings. Also our old neighbor next door died in fire, fell asleep with cigarette in bed, and on the door to his apartment were little marking of Christian cross a slightly above peephole. That always scared me a bit. He died before the table incident, and I still remember a lot of firemen and police near our house when I was returning home from the school. Maybe this was his ghost who were messing with us, though I'm a bit skeptical. There are many things that could do this sound, especially an apartment building with lots of neighbors, but it was strange that sound disappeared when we paid attention, talking or moving, and it definitely didn't sound like it was from another apartment. I'm sitting at the same desk now. I know I said I'm a bit skeptical, but I had many paranormal experiences in my childhood and my parents have some stories that gives me chills till that day. Maybe not paranormal, but very strange. We moved to Russia from Kyrgyzstan, returned to historical homeland, originally we are Russians, but Soviet times, etc. We lived in small town called Karabalta and I've seen some shit there that I can't explain till this day. I still get chills when I think back and it makes me question how true some urban legends and folklore are, even as a skeptic of these things usually. I was around 8 or 9 back in the early 00s and I had this vivid nightmare. I'd describe it as vivid because I can still recall most of it after all of these years. Normally I forget about these things in the matter of days. In this nightmare I'm inside my house at the front door, it's night time, no lights but the glimmer of the moon shining through the windows giving the entire house an eerie blue tint. At this point I'm pretty scared and want to get back to my room to get under the covers. I wasn't sure how I got there and definitely had no idea I was dreaming. So I run up the stairs, which were directly to the left of the front door, sprint down to the end of the hallway and open the door to my bedroom. It's probably somewhat of an important point to note that I was sharing my room with my baby brother at the time. He slept in the crib and I slept on a futon on the floor. The crib was right next to the doorway. As soon as I open the door, I immediately notice a figure resembling a female with long hair leaning over the crib staring back at me with a sinister smile. Obviously I get startled and fear starts to kick in because it clearly wasn't my mother. I was frozen there for what felt like an eternity before I could slowly move my legs an inch backwards. The moment the figure stood up, I bolted back out of the doorway. As a clumsy kid, I trip and fall on my ass as I attempt to look behind me. Once again, I'm paralyzed by fear and could not do anything but watch the figure float towards me. I try to inch backwards while on my ass but the figure was clearly faster. Eventually it was only a foot or so away before it slowly descends to my eye level. As its face drew closer, I noticed that there was something wrong with it it clearly resembled a human female but something wasn't right about its mouth. Then it hit me its mouth was split from ear to ear. The girl smiles and asks, do you think I'm pretty? And as I opened my mouth to answer the question, I woke up drenched in sweat. Now fast forward about 5 to 6 years. It's nearing Halloween and I'm hanging out with my cousin talking about scary stories. I tell him about this dream I had and he reacts as if I had seen the devil. He instantly yanks open his laptop and shows me this webpage about a Japanese urban legend called the Kuchise Kona. The details of this urban legend were pretty accurate to what had happened to me and it really creeped me out because I had no idea such a thing existed when I had that dream. It was strange that feeling that a nightmare you had was potentially something more than just a dream. That affirmation left me with an immensely uneasy feeling that I still experience to this day when I recall these memories. I used to have regular nightmares where I would hear footsteps outside my bedroom window. 
Now, my bed faced away from the window, with my pillow just below my windowsill. So I would look up to see a shadow on my wall, turn around and see a hooded figure, just outside my window. I regularly had that sick feeling that I was being watched when I would walk to school, would always look in between buildings I passed, check the reflections in cars at the light to see if I was being followed. One morning my gut told me to run as fast as I could and never look back. Then I felt like someone caught the ends of my hair. I had to run 1.5 miles to school, at the top of a hill. I was so scared. The next week, my mom drove me to school. Then she took me to a psychiatrist. I was diagnosed with paranoid schizoaffective bipolar type disorder. A few weeks passed and the nightmares weren't as scary, they weren't real, I wasn't being followed. Then it snowed. I woke up to footprints outside my window and horror ran through my entire body. I went up to the staircase and saw someone outside the front door, the handle slowly turning. I screamed, and my dad came down the stairs. It's just your hallucinations sweetie, we'll have medicine soon. I pointed outside the window, and he saw them. The footprints. Luckily, my dad trains hunting and cadaver canines. They literally track people through the rubble of a collapsed building. So he leashed up our dog, found the dude and had him arrested. He had been following me for almost a year, took pictures, and done the same for at least two others. Then they found the bodies of two teenage girls. He will be away for a very long time. But I still wake up with the feeling I'm being watched at night. I was about 15, my room was in the basement. Important to note that there are no windows, no ways for outside light to get in. I was sitting on the edge of my bed reading comic books, my bed is in one corner and my open door is in the opposite corner. It was nighttime so it was pitch black outside, and all the lights outside in the hallway were off while my room lights remained on. The rest of my family was upstairs doing their own thing, two floors up. As I was reading, in my peripheral I see a flash of light walk by my door on the outside. I look up, nothing. Still dark, no lights. I go back to reading thinking it was just my imagination. A few seconds later, that flash of light walks by my door but goes the opposite way. At this point, I know it wasn't nothing, but can't help but figure out how a figure of light walked by twice when there's no source of light anywhere else. I ended up calling my parents because I was getting pretty scared. Creepy thing is my grandpa who lived in the Philippines passed away a few days prior. I only went to see him once when I was about 10 and I told him before leaving that I'd come back to visit, we never did. My mom said that it was him coming to check up on me since we never went back. She told me to say I'm okay grandpa, you can go now and I did. Never experienced it or anything like that again. I'm not a religious person and I don't believe in ghosts or apparitions so there's a part of me that still wonders how the hell the light figure got there. The other part of me wants to believe it actually was him because I can't think of another explanation. A couple of years ago when I was at my mom's house me and her were eating spaghetti and meatballs, my brother was playing Call of Duty on his Xbox. All of a sudden the house started to vibrate we didn't know what was going on at first be considered maybe there was an earthquake to we checked Google and there was no sign on an earthquake, also the ground outside wasn't shaking dot it was off and on for 2 minutes at a time with about an hour in between each, this went on until I fell asleep at around 12.30 am. I woke back up at around 3 in the morning to the vibrations, it was getting really annoying at this point so I went outside with my flashlight to see if the hot tub was causing it. As I walked outside I heard a bunch of rustling in the woods I turned around with my flashlight and seen a very tall man, I would say about 6 apostrophe 7, with a pipe standing on the wood line of my property staring at me. I acted like I didn't see anything, slowly walked back inside, I don't know why but I was too scared to call the police. It hasn't happened since but ever since that night I've been horrified of my backyard. I was about 7 or 8 years old at my dad's girlfriend's apartment. I was playing dolls with her daughter in her room while the rest of the family was in the living room right down the hall, it was a small apartment so the living room could be seen from the room. I remember sitting on the floor brushing the doll's hair. My dad girlfriend's daughter got up to go get a spray bottle while I continued brushing the hair. This is where it got weird. I remember a creepy older voice coming from the closet telling me to slide the closet door open. I distinctly remember trying to figure out if the voice was real or not, and I stood up to open it. The voice started telling me good job now come a little closer and open it. I remember being so scared but determined to open the door. I inched my way to the closet and came close to touching the door to slide it open when the daughter came back in the room. I booked it as fast as I could to the living room. I told my dad and everyone in the living room and they all laughed. My dad went and opened the closet door and it was empty. I remember feeling stupid, but scared because I knew the voice wasn't in my head. Anyways, this wasn't the first time I heard voices, happened two other times, but they stopped when I got older. 
When I was in middle school I was a latchkey kid. We lived in an apartment complex with a lot of families and college kids who would come and go and there were always stray animals around, it was kind of a bad area. One day when I was coming home from school I saw a new puppy over by one of the college kids' apartments. In the past these kids had gotten animals before and let us neighborhood kids pet them, so I went to pet the puppy. This dog was not normal. It looked like a regular golden retriever puppy but it was a really light sandy color, almost all white and its eyes looked totally black. It did not respond to me at all. No tail wagging, no sniffing, just staring and direct eye contact. It walked away behind the apartment and made no sound walking on wet grass. It creeped me out so I just left. Over the next few months I saw this dog around the complex a lot. It was always in the same spot. I would be playing with other kids and I'd look up and the dog would be like 10 feet away from me, never closer and it would always walk back around the apartment. Nobody else saw the dog. I would ask my siblings, the other kids, and the college kids about it and none of them knew what I was talking about. This dog never blinked, never made a sound, and never appeared to get bigger. Finally one other person saw it, like an 8 year old, and he also told me that whenever he saw the dog no one else did. This went on for almost half a year then it just disappeared. I am completely convinced that that apartment complex was haunted because so much creepy shit happened while we lived there, but that dog has stuck with me for years. I went to camp one summer when I was about 12 to 13. I shared a cabin with two other girls. One of them fell asleep instantly after laying down on our last night. But me and the other girl stayed up talking until we heard someone walk up and knock on our cabin door. We only had screen windows, so I was able to look out from my bed and see that no one was there. We thought it was a prank so laughed it off and carried on. But, then we heard loud stomping and footsteps walking outside our cabin on the wooden porch. It sounded like someone was wearing boots, walking across the porch, then knocking on the door loudly, continuously. The door was shaking. Except when I would look out, no one was there. Me and the other girl were totally shaken, even crying, absolutely panicked. We begged for them to go away and hoped it was some weird prank of the counselors that we couldn't figure out, but no. Nothing and no one was there no matter how hard I looked. I got out my flashlight and tried to find someone messing with us from a distance, no one was there. We moved our mattresses to the floor and held hands and cried until the knocking and footsteps went away. Me and her woke up the next morning still shaken and asked around if anyone was playing some sort of sick joke on us. No one knew what we were talking about. Sticks with me. Me and some friends used to go hang out at another friend's house after work pretty much every night. You know, drink beer, play video games, pretty standard stuff. Eventually our friend who owns the house moved out so we weren't sure where we could go. We decided his, now vacant, driveway was a suitable place to chill out so we just parked our car in the driveway and have some beers. So sitting in my car, drinking 40s in this abandoned driveway slash house, my friend hears creaking from a tree directly in front of my car. He says, hey man, I think that tree is going to fall. Silly I say and brush it off. Less than a minute later this 50 feet tree comes crashing down less than a foot from the passenger side of my car. We were lucky enough to be able to back my car out, with many scratches to my car, unscathed and drive around the crash tree back onto the street. That was crazy enough, but here comes the truly bizarre and unexplained part. The next night we still weren't sure where to go and hang out after work, but thought let's go back to our friend's abandoned house to check out what happened the night before and drink. A few of our other friends wanted to tag along so we said what the hell, why not? We had two car loads of people that made our way to the driveway, around the tree that now lay in front of this abandoned house. We parked and drank and enjoyed our after work festivities when we noticed a car parked at the top of the driveway that had not been then there when we pulled in. We went to check it out and saw this car had no engine, but was just a shell with wheels. Weird enough to make us decide that this was no longer a safe place and needed to get the hell out of there. We load up into our respective cars and proceed to navigate around the previously fallen tree to get back to the street. As my car was leaving something, or someone, must have jostled the engine less car enough to start rolling down the hill. Miraculously the engine less car rolled right between the rear of my car and the front of my colleague's car, and directly into the abandoned house. The house now has new owners, but I don't think any of us went back to that house after that night. Walking into a house, my parents were going to buy at the time, seven years ago probably. I was 12 and literally just in the back seat playing on my iPad the entire time we went from property to property. The moment I walked into this house, bad vibes so off-putting, felt like I was being watched. Mind you, I'm 12, have been watching YouTube videos all day, and I'm looking at houses with my parents, who are now divorced. The house was so, hollow. 
It was missing the feeling of a home. It was all so cold, new, modern. This house was in a neighborhood easily a quarter million dollars out of our price range, so, I was more confused. We walked upstairs. The master bedroom was just, wrong. I got so sweaty in there, dizzy, and lightheaded. I had been drinking water and soda all day, just had lunch prior to this. I have no food allergies, and no health problems that would cause this. Bad vibe. So I walk out of the master. I said to my mom I didn't really like that room, I don't recall saying that to her, but I sure remember feeling it. We toured the rest of the upstairs and first floor. Then to the basement. Once again, that striking bad vibe. I felt like something was wrong, like I shouldn't be down there. I got anxious, sweaty, and had a hot flash. I walked outside, the basement had a slide door, to the backyard. My parents came out, the realtor went back inside. I told my parents I don't like this house, it's creeping me out. They looked at each other, then at the house, then at me. They then informed me that they needed to tell me something about the house, I'm sure you know where this is going. The previous owners. Died. There. A family of five, dad, mom, infant, third grade daughter, fifth grade son, not all of them died. It was far worse than some freak gas leak accident. The father and mom sent the kids off to school on the bus one morning. The infant's crib was in the master bedroom. The mother came back upstairs from dropping the kids at the bus stop. Her husband shot her, and shot the infant child he then dragged their bodies to the basement, where he lied them up, laid down, and shot himself. The two other kids came home from school, on the bus, to find this. I hope they tore that house down. You couldn't pay me to go back inside there. Well, maybe now, because I'm a young adult college student who needs cash. But, so creepy, we'll never forget.